And welcome to another edition of It's All About the Youth. I am your host, Aaron Sutton, man, and we're back. And I love football, man. It is the weather is changing. The time of year we're getting close to playoff season. It is around the corner. Louisiana youth is at an all-time high. You saw it last week. We had teams in here with Madison Prep. We had our guys in here that are alumni from Madison Prep that played in Louisiana youth football. We had Woodlawn High School alumni in here. You heard them talking. They were going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, talking about the past, talking about the things that they look forward to back in the day, and to also talking about the goals and the things that they are accomplishing in today's time at the next level of high school football. Well, that continues on today. High school goals. Hashtag high school goals. This week's show, I promise you, will be action-packed, just like last week's show was. We'll have another great show. We have the Catholic High Bears in the building. We have the Southern Lab Kittens in the building. We have alumni from both schools that are going to talk about their experience with Louisiana U football. And we got some football coaches here. Who knows? I may ask them some of those tough questions like, hey, man, what do you have in store for the playoffs? What's next? How is the alumni from Louisiana U panning out for you and your, on your team? Who knows, man? Keep it locked. But if you're not watching the show on a weekly basis, it's on demand. LYSNTV.com, LYSNRadio.com, the podcast on all media outlets. Tune in to us. You don't want to miss the show because it's all about the youth. to say great job, congratulations, or way to go? Crown Trophy on Sherwood Forest Boulevard in Baton Rouge has the trophy, plaque, acrylic, or crystal award you're looking for. Whether it's for your team, business, or church, come to Crown Trophy. We guarantee the highest level of customer service, and there's no charge for rush orders or trophy engraving. We're nationally known and locally owned. Visit us online to view our catalog at www.crowntrophy.com. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Roadrunner Towing, we love our God, our children, our nation, and yes, our sports. So, let's play ball. Score big when you need to tow, either in East Baton Rouge or West Baton Rouge. Because at Roadrunner Towing, we don't want an arm and a leg, we just want your toes. And we're back here on It's All About the Youth. I told you we had some bears in the building. All right, man, I look forward to talking to a great coach here. Who do we have here with us? Uh, my name is Gabe Fertitta. I'm the head football coach at uh, Catholic High School. Um, going into my ninth year at Catholic, my third year, third season as the head coach. 
Good following day. the legend. The you legend know, himself, I, Coach yes, Ryder. Sir. Man. Yes, sir. Big shoes to fill, Coach. Certainly. But you've done a great job doing it, Coach. Yep. You know, he told me, hey, they going to tell you you got big shoes to fill? Just walk in your own shoes. So, right. Hey. That's what I've been doing. Speaking of the words, man. Speaking of that, you know, so you got the bling on your hand to represent it, right? Oh, I forgot that was on there. <laughs> Hey, what a good thing. You just forget about it, huh? Yeah. That yeah. Means, I mean, it's a constant. That's what you're trying to make that a constant. Yep. 2017, that was my first year as the head coach. Yeah. And, uh, and we won it. And, good deal. And these guys had a big part in that. Good deal. And who, uh, who's here with us? Uh, Josh Parker, Catholic High, running back. Uh, Josh Parker? Oh, I played for the Vikings, uh, the Rams. <laughs> And the Falcons. Vikings, Rams, and the Falcons? Yo. And the Bears? Oh, yeah, and the Bears, too. <laughs> Good deal. We also have a guy on the end, man. Who's this guy on the end? Right I'm Braylon Morgan, Catholic High Athlete. I play for the South Baton Rouge Jaguars. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. I tell you what, man, I look at these guys, man. I've, I've been fortunate enough to watch them grow up and mature in, in the, the maturation process. And, I, I'm fortunate, man. I look forward to Friday Night Lights, you know, the, the, the highlights, uh, when you see the replays. Coach, you, you've done a great job of developing this young talent. Tell me something about uh, what's the unique thing about these guys that you, you'd say that are important? I'd say the most, the thing that's uh, unique the most about the guys, especially that come from the Louisiana youth football, is uh, they just love football. Like, it could be practice, it could be watching film, it could be at the game. Like, to them, they just want to be out there on the field and just, they bring like an, an energy and an enthusiasm and a joy out there that for us as coaches, sometimes we forget, you know? Like, we get so locked in on the game plan, the X's and O's, the, you know, and then you go out there and these guys are running around like they just six, seven years old having a good time, you know? and not, And not they bring a, an enthusiasm that, that, that we need. Right. So I, I look at, you know, Braylon, man, I watched him literally since he was a little guy, man, a little guy, little big guy, big heart. Braylon, tell me a memory that you have, I guess, from youth football, all of, you know, what, was one of the, what is one of those things that carried over to help your high school career be better from Louisiana youth football? I think the main thing that helped me was to know that Nobody's too small to do anything. Right. And always follow your heart and just play. Don't worry about anything. Just play and have fun and do what you love. Okay. And the infamous Joshua Parker. In, in Louisiana U football, he's known as Joystick. We, we got to tell you, you know, your handle, a.k.a. You should put that on your, your Twitter feed. Man. You know, so, <laughs> so tell us, what is that one thing that you carried over from youth football to Catholic High to help, you know, help you propel yourself to where you're at right now? I think I, the biggest thing I learned was having patience because, you know, in Louisiana youth football, they hard on us and they yell on us, steadily on us. So it carried over to, to Catholic. And when somebody criticized me or, like, gave constructive criticism, I never got mad, but I went back in the lab mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, uh, and fixed it. Okay. Good deal, man. Another question I'd I, I like to just propose to you, Coach. I mean, you, you touched on it. You know, the kids from Louisiana Youth Football are definitely difference makers in your program. What would you, what would you say would be one of those golden nuggets that when you're looking for a kid out of Louisiana Youth Football, what are some of the things that you – the qualities that you look for? Yeah, I mean, with all the kids, you know, that end up coming to Catholic or, or wherever they go to high school mm – -hmm. Um, when you watch them play in the in the youth league, you know, a lot, there's a lot of misconceptions. People think, you know, we go out there, we're trying to find the biggest, the fastest, the best or whatever. And really, um, the guys that are the most successful, whether it's with us or the guys that go to, we got the guys from Southern Lab here, whatever mm -hmm. is, the guys that when they fail, like when things don't go right, and just like Josh was talking about, they get right back on and they go again, you know? And it's those guys that um, when they are challenged and they're not successful, how they respond after that. To me, that's, that's the measure of a football player 
good you deal. know, in anything is, right. hey, when, when it, the chips are down and it's not going your way, right. how do you respond at that point, you know? So going back, looking back, you guys, were, you guys competed against each other growing up as kids, right? So were, you, were your teams rivals? Yeah, they were. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely? Definitely. So tell me a memory that you have playing against each other. You, who want to see it first? Me, I, will. I go. I, go. <laughs> I think there's a story about Josh uh, stripping the ball from Braylon, if I'm not mistaken. My wrist was broke. <laughs> Your wrist was broke at the time. It was. And what happened? I stripped him on the four yard line, and he's still gonna use that excuse to this day. But we still won the game because I stripped him on the four yard line. So I got a question. On Friday night or Thursday, you know, walkthrough practice is happening, or whatever day you guys have walkthrough practice. Do you guys ever talk about the, the Saturday game, like who's going to play on Saturday, or when your teams are going to play each other, when the Rams and Jaguars are going to play? Do y'all kind of talk about it, or do y'all get that, you know, going amongst the team? Like, I'm a Ram, I'm a Jaguar. Do y'all kind of do that with each other? We do. Like, I still think about it. Like, every time I see him, like, dang, this dude really made me fumble. Like, <laughs> how? <laughs> but I think I got my lick back. <laughs> We was our senior year. It was the last time we played. I didn't play linebacker at all. So one of our linebackers went out big with a concussion or an injury or something like that. So I was coming in and Josh was running up the middle and I was like, oh yeah, I gotta get him. I gotta get him. <laughs> so the first time, all right, he, he, he went through that. I wasn't expecting him to come that hard. He, he, he hit me. So the second time, I was like, oh yeah, same play, he came. I hit him so hard, I ain't lying, I hit him. <laughs> I hit him. And after that, it was just on. Parker, you remember that? I, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> you got that look on your face like, that never happened. I remember winning the game. That's all. You won the game? We won the game. Speaking of that. Okay. It, it was a blowout. It was a blowout? It was, it was rough? six to zero. That was, <laughs> that was the championship This is game. every day right so, here. So it, this it is sounds every like day. the spirit of, of competition is heightened at practice. When you mix all those great athletes together, that that spirit of camaraderie, the spirit of, of competitiveness together. Coach, sound like you have a good mix, man, a good culture. Yeah, you know, we, we, um, when we go out there and practice, you know, I mean, the guys are all trying to compete against each other and uh, earn spots, whether it's special team spots, whether it's, you know, tail. these two guys, they, they compete every Friday night for carries as tailbacks on the team, you know, so there's a good healthy competition that goes on there, and I think you know, the high tide raises all ships, right. you know, the more they compete, the better everybody gets, iron sharpens iron, oh, that yeah. whole thing. So it's, um, it's, it's great to have these guys um, be a part of the program and, yeah. and just um, bring a different experience. You know, you get, you get kids that are from different areas. You know, one of the things that is unique about Catholic is the kids are from all over the place. Right. Yeah, kids from. It's not like a home base school. It's, it's people are yeah, you you know it, from all it's over. you got you got a lot of uh, diversity mm -hmm. in where people come from and their experiences, and then you throw them out there all on the football field, and it's just one group. Speaking of a diverse environment, how how has that been for you being in the Catholic high environment, where people from, I guess, all walks of life, come together like a gumbo pot, really, you know, and 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 coexist in a, in a school environment how does, how does that work for you? it's really good because at the same time most people you hear a lot like oh catholic don't have girls or like it helped you focus at the same time i'm not even gonna lie to you if i was at a school with girls i don't even think i <laughs> i'll do right <laughs> but like it helps you focus it gets you right and just knowing different people mm -hmm. and you knowing different people have your back than everybody you've been through in life yeah, I uh, agree with him because at first when I first came to Catholic, you know, it's stereotypes about it. All boys, it's going to be hard. But once you, if you're not really in the system, then you really don't know it at all. Mm -hmm. It helps you a lot on and off the field as, you, as a man and as a player. Okay. So culturally, like the difference of culture, tell me about that. How, how does that work for you? Then? Catch you up. This diversity, like, I mean, it's, it's so many things that, that could come left and right. Just even a teammate, you know, just music genres are different. I mean, just experiences, likes and likes and dislikes. How do you Man, balance that? It's crazy because it's like what you would think a Catholic is really not what it is. Like, 
music, we pretty much listen to all the same thing. Like our quarterback listen to rappers like Young Boy, Kevin Gates. Okay. And it's just it's crazy because it's not what you expect, but at the same time, it is what it is. Well, I'll ask the hard question then. Yeah. What do you what did you expect then? You saying it's not <laughs> what you expected? I thought it was like. I'm not even gonna lie, I thought they were gonna listen to like more country music before a game or something. But, uh, it's, With Coach Petito, just probably, what did you expect? Let me hear it. It was, it was like when I seen Jackson Thomas listening to like Kevin Gates and Young Boy, I was like, oh, this dude might actually be kind of cool. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, you'll come and you'll be like, yeah, these dudes not tough, but then once you get on the field, you get knocked out a few times. You get up, <laughs> look around, like, oh my gosh. He just like me, and like we all brothers. You embrace the culture and everything, Good so deal, it's really nothing different. You guys have you guys have definitely shocked some people this season, man. I, I mean, you you've been up to Ar- you play the team from Arkansas. You play the team, um, a, a prominent team of Edna Carr out of New Orleans, and some local teams that have made some noise prior to meeting up with you guys. Coach, what does it look like going forward right now? In the, in the locker room you know well the locker room you know I mean I, I one of the biggest challenges as a coach is when you're winning mm-hmm. is keeping guys focused on the next thing right. you know uh, the two times we've won state championships we lost three regular season games mm-hmm. in in those seasons and those were opportunities to come back and say all right you know you can do it your way and we lose, or you can get on the train and do it right, and there's some, some get right that goes on in those seasons. Right. What's difficult is you win in, you're successful, and you're having to convince guys, you know, like, hey, we still not where we need to be, you right. know? And so that's, that's one of the difficult things, I think, with guys like these um, and some of the other leaders on our team, they've done a really good job in keeping everybody focused, keeping everybody, you know, hey, just the next game, you know, that kind of thing. Because from the outside, I mean, you know, the, the our, our own the our own parents, our own students, our own teachers at school, you know, right. who who are we going to play in the in the playoffs? Who, you know, where are we play in the state championship game? Well, yeah. I didn't even know we were in that. Like yeah. I didn't even know we hadn't even gotten there yet, yeah. you know. So Keeping the guys focused is probably the, the number one thing for us as a staff going forward. Good deal, Coach. Is there anything closing out, you know, that you would like a person to know about the Catholic High Bear program? Or is there, is there one thing that you want people that – I mean, because you were able to dispel some things here today because they may have perceived it to be one way. And, you, you know, you are able to share some things that gave some light you know, in the in the locker room, on the field, the camaraderie, the culture. Is there anything else that you would like to, our listeners to know? You know, I think I think anywhere you go, there's some misconceptions about Catholic. There's misconceptions about Catholic from the Catholic elementary schools that you know traditionally all those kids come to Catholic. There there are misconceptions about it in the community at Louisiana Youth or wherever you go. And um, the thing I always tell people is. Um, it's a very structured environment, a very disciplined environment, and um, you know it really. It's not for everybody, you know. Like it, it really isn't. It's it's a place where um, people are going to be all treated the same. And sometimes uh, when guys come to school there and think that they're going to be treated differently because they're a great football player, because they've heard that, you know, oh, you go to Catholic. You're a great football player, you know, whatever. And then you hold everybody to the same standard, and now all of a sudden it's like, wait, I didn't, I didn't go there for that, you know. <laughs> and uh, I think that's one of the misconceptions that we have. And um, guys like this do a great job at, at dispelling that. And then guys like Jackson, you know, our quarterback. Went to yeah. St. Aloysius, you know, like a hundred percent of those kids are going to Catholic High, right. and these guys come from Louisiana youth. They see the St. Aloysius guy, you know, and oh, uh, you know, whatever. and then oh man, we got all these similarities, you know, we got all these things in common. So it, that's what I really like about it is just the the different walks of life, people from all over. Good deal. I'm glad you were able to share that with us, Coach. I think it, you know, opens my eyes to our, our viewers and, and our listeners, man. I look forward to seeing you guys accomplish your mission and goal this season. 
Like I said, I have some babies over there that I, I, I keep a close eye on, man, and I'm super proud of these guys. And thank you for giving them opportunity and continue, continuing the process from Louisiana Youth to Catholic High of molding young men into becoming great men. This we is awesome, man. You, man. Thank you all for having us. All this right. is fantastic. We appreciate it. Appreciate you. Keep it locked because we're going to keep this thing rolling, Coach, just like you guys are rolling. We're going to keep it rolling right here on this All About the Youth. We'll be back shortly with the Southern Lab Kittens. Roadrunner Towing, we love our God, our children, our nation, and yes, our sports. So, let's play ball. Score big when you need to tow, either in East Baton Rouge or West Baton Rouge. Because at Roadrunner Towing, we don't want an arm and a leg, we just want your toes. Do you need to say great job, congratulations, or way to go? Crown Trophy on Sherwood Forest Boulevard in Baton Rouge has the trophy, plaque, acrylic, or crystal award you're looking for. Whether it's for your team, business, or church, come to Crown Trophy. We guarantee the highest level of customer service, and there's no charge for rush orders or trophy engraving. We're nationally known and locally owned. Visit us online to view our catalog at www.crowntrophy.com. Welcome back to It's All About the Youth. Once again, man, I told you we have another team in the building. We have some superior athletes in the building, too, man. My, my guys, man. We got Coach, Coach Baker is here. Coach, you want to introduce yourself tell them about you and where, where you at right now, Coach? Uh, my name is Coach Baker. I'm the uh, defensive coordinator and associate coach at Southern Lab. Um, I was formerly the head coach at Slaughter Community Charter School. Uh, I'm loving it at the lab school. I'm loving, loving it at the I'm lab. Loving it. Something about that lab, man, huh? It is, it is. I'll be honest with you, man. It's, it's something about because these two I have with me. These are my guys. These Speaking are my of guys, which, man. let's see who we got in here, man. Who, who is this guy right here, man? Jabari Tripoli, linebacker at Southern Lab. Michael Wicker, defensive back and receiver at Southern University Laboratory School. He's serious with it, man. Look, so, you know, it's like, once again, just like with Catholic High, man, it's, this is a homecoming, man. These, these are my babies, man. I, I get they, they ain't babies no more, man. They think he done hit the iron a little bit. You know, he got, Chip got a chest chest. He got, <laughs> he got a chest chest now. So he, he, he getting tough and big, man. Super proud of him. I heard you guys 
you made a phenomenal announcement, man. You want to share that with, with our listeners? What, what did you announce? Oh, yeah, I made an announcement that uh, I committed to the University of Arizona, and that's why I'll be attending the next four or three years. Okay. Okay, good deal. Mike, we got some things on the horizon for you, too, right? Coach Baker, tell me something about being at the lab, man. Your experience of being there, the culture and the kids. How, how's it been for you? It's uh, it, it was a change for me because uh, you know, for the past three years I've been uh, around a bunch of rural kids, and then mm-hmm. I came to Southern Lab is more so uh, the, the, the city type. I might have one or two country boys like yeah. myself, yeah. Uh, but when I got there, it was like. Dang, I really got these type of guys on my team, <laughs> and so now I'm able to do a lot more what I what I've been wanting to do with my athletes, uh, with these guys, because they can just fly around to the ball. They can do some things, you know, that maybe prevented me in the past from it, it, showing what I can really do as a defensive coordinator. But when you have a couple guys that can play play a little Good bit. Good deal. Now I, I remember back uh, last spring, you guys, you actually had a team in seven oh seven. You know, Louis yeah, that's Alley correct. I did. I did. Uh, you know, younger, some younger guys and right. some older, you know. Growing up, these guys were actually part of the first regime of, of 707. Tell us about your experience playing 707 with Louisiana. Well, uh, with Louisiana U of the Lions, that was a great experience. We went uh, to Texas, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah, we went to Texas. We had a lot of great games we played. We visited a college. It was TCU, I think it was. Yeah. But, yeah, we enjoyed ourselves. Experience that it was a great experience. You know, I played some receiver then. I really read no receiver. <laughs> Kyle touched down his own in AT t- Stadium, Dallas Cowboys Stadium. You know, that's a good experience for me right there. Yeah. So being able to play in an NFL stadium that was big, Coach. And I know you you guys competed when we did it locally here. Um, and tell us, tell us about the experience with your kids and getting a chance to do that. Well, you know, we, we heard about it late, but when we when we heard about it, I got with uh, Coach Leroy, and we, we jumped all over it. And one thing that that uh, that it helped me personally, my son was uh, playing quarterback, uh-huh. and he was used to heading the ball off. So I got with our president, like, listen, we need to do this. You know, especially if my son, we playing quarterback. <laughs> I can't have him out there, you know, handing the ball off for the last two years. Now you want him to throw it. So that was big for them. And, uh, you know, actually we getting, uh, they're getting ready to go to California uh, in the Snoop Dogg Bowl uh, here in December shortly. Okay. So, yeah. Even though I'm not with the uh, um, Charlotte Community yeah. Charter School, I'm still heavily involved with the Knights organization. Okay, good deal. Shouts out to those guys, man. They actually, you know, are doing some good things yeah. out here. They need to come on over to Louisiana Youth, man. We, we working on it. We working on it. We definitely working on it. Y'all need to come it. on over, man, and see what it's like to play against you know, some of these guys. Right, you know, right, right. They're little brothers and cousins. About. You know, they, Magnus is coming on up. He's going to be in Louisiana Youth soon. You know, so they, they got they got family members that are still right. in the league. So tell me about it. You guys have been teammates for how long? We've been, we've been long time since, since about Pee-wee? eight years old. Eight so years old. A long time. And what team did you guys play for? South Baton Rouge Rams, the best team. So you guys have been teammates since you were eight years old. You guys are going yes, to finish out your high school career together, right? Yes, sir. That's big, man. How, how big is that? How does that, how does that measure up? Here? I mean, uh, it's just I grew relationships with a lot of people over Louisiana youth like Josh and Braylon. We all grew up together. But, like, being on the same team with this guy just, you know, it, it it's just been it's been a great a great experience for me. You know, uh it helped me develop my character and we I didn't see him grow as well over the couple of years that we played with each other. Uh, yeah, playing with Mike since I was eight years old, we always been on defense together. <laughs> even with seven on seven. So when I in high school, I got Mike behind me in the second there, so I know he got my back, I got his back, you know, we just communicate with each other and he like a brother to me. Yeah, so so chemistry, coach. Chemistry. How was it walking in with a group of guys, and you you probably hearing them? They got chatter because you got guys from multiple teams on your on, on, your, on your team right now. How how is that in, in the room? How does the room sound? Oh, it's it's never quiet. It's yeah, never the, quiet. the room is never quiet. I, I can remember my first day at practice. You know, I'm trying to fill out the kids. This was during the summer, so I'm coming in. You know. I'm working with the secondary, working with the linebackers. That trip come over there, coach. Let me play safety. I say no, you playing linebacker. Keep in mind, you know, I'm still trying to, you know, figure my way out. So he like, coach, put me in safety. Put me. I like, no, you're not going to safety. So finally, I give in. I say, trip, go to safety. I kid you not. The first play, we doing seven on seven. He catch a pick, run back the other way, then run back to me and spike the ball. I, say, I told you, put me in safety. Then he comes Mike with it. Yeah, coach, he told you to put him in safety. Man, but I love these guys. They uh they keep me on my toes. They keep me on my toes. Oh yeah, man. I can only imagine. I'm just speaking from experience of seeing they can be a character to yeah. in the room. 
You know, Trip's kind of quiet. You know, right, right. He's got another uh, alter ego. Yeah, Trip had me fooled about until about three weeks ago. He had me fooled right. good. Right. So going back, man, I, um, is there a team or a game that you remember playing in Louisiana youth football that, like a rivalry game or a team that you that you could think about? The Jaguars and the Vikings. Those are our two hardest teams, but especially the Jaguars. Like that was definitely our rival team. Since I was a peewee, that was a rival team. And it was one game, they beat us. We played at Southern, and they beat us six to seven. Let Braylon, the Buster went up the middle. You know they used to be squatting down, so they, they beat us on that little touchdown. What, what offense they ran to what? Uh, they were just squatting, they were squatting. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't know which one it was, they were so small. We had, we had a show about that a while back. And it's the single wing, that's what the coach said it was that week. So, so. Do you, do you have one of those games or one of those teams you remember? Oh, yeah, Race of the Jaguars, my PV year. This was like my last year. I was nine years old. Playing the Jaguars, night game. Braylon, he was running the ball. Everybody thought he was tackle. Held his hand on the ground, got up, started running. <laughs> we all just thought he was down. They won 6-7. Yeah. Good deal, man. I, You know, I always look back and I, I salute you guys, man, because you guys have, have maintained friendships over the years, whether you guys stayed at the same school or y'all transitioned or they went to other schools. Do you find yourself trying to see what the score is of your, your former teammate or a guy you formerly competed with against uh, on Friday night now since it's, you know, they're in high school, you guys are in high school. Do you guys still communicate with each other a lot? Definitely. Uh, out of Louisiana youth, I still talk to the majority of the players that play with me. You know, we got the Joe Williams. I know he was on last week. Josh, Braylon, we all talk. We still communicate with each other. We still have a close relationship. That's good. Cool. How about you? I still talk to Joe, Josh, Braylon, Cardell, Ty, Damone. Yeah, I talk to all them boys. Still, they come to the games and everything. So, you know, we do stuff with each other on the weekends and still communicate with each other. So that's big, Coach. So you get a chance to see guys that maybe you, you didn't coach or but, but the alumni I found, you know, is, is pretty strong. Tell me about that that Southern Lab alumni culture. How, how does that? That, that? that was another shock for me. You know, like I said, when I was at my last school, we didn't we really didn't have alumni. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, once I get to the lab school and then after that first win, they all coming out, you know, introducing themselves. And I'm like, man, this is like, it's almost like a university. Because yeah. they, they, they're they there. They're supporting us when we're down. They're supporting us when they're winning. And it, it, it's good to have people, you know, in your corner, especially when you're losing. Because yeah. uh, they can easily turn away and walk away. But not here. They, they, they're thick and thin. They've been there with us. That's a good deal, Coach. Coach, is that, is that one moment this season that you can look back on and you say, man, I saw that turning point for my guys to say, well, we got something special there. That, that was that central game. I, I know we came out on the uh, on the other side than we wanted to, uh, but but they got in the, inside the red zone twice, uh, and and they and they didn't punch it in, and then finally they got down on, on the two yard line, fourth down, 36 seconds left, and then and we still had the opportunity to make a play, and they punched it in there. So that let me know right there against a five A school like that, you know. And at the point, I think they was averaging like 55, 55 points at the time, and we held them to seven points. So that that was huge, and that let me know in my mind like you know what. We about to make a run. Yeah. yeah. Good deal. Coach, you said that with some, some true confidence and, and a stamp, man. So you guys are in district play right now. Correct. We start uh, uh, we open up district tomorrow night. All right. Good deal. Who you guys playing first? We play uh Thrive Academy. Thrive? Okay. So you guys are, are looking forward to the district play and it, to set a, set the tone for that, that playoff, that deep playoff run, right, hopefully right. a state championship. Yeah, actually on our ride that. over here, I was talking to him, I said, look guys, we need to start setting some goals. I know we yeah. you know, we talked amongst ourselves already. We need to put some stuff on paper so we'll know what we're aiming for. Um, because I think this is time we should be peaking right now, getting ready um, for the Superdome, if that's what we play at. I don't think yeah. nobody really knows what the select school is going to play at right, right. now. That, that, that's a... That's a a great subject that we're gonna we got actually gonna cover because I, I heard coach you know uh, coach Fatita from Catholic he, he said the same thing he's like we don't know where we're gonna play that we're gonna have a show about it soon though uh, but I, I want to definitely touch on this too man you guys making a run right now you know speaking on that injuries any injuries or anything like that that you see for prevent you guys from getting there. Well, we've been banged up uh, pretty good here lately. Uh, we had a, a tough, tough non-district schedule, uh, but I think we're getting everybody healthy back. Right. Um, man, Trippie went down. 
uh, with an ankle injury. Mike was banged up uh, with a hip. Uh, my safety, uh, Ken Andrews, was banged up with a knee. So we, we've been banged up. But uh, this week, actually yesterday, I looked at the other coach. I said, listen, we back. So I had all of them back in practice for the first time in about three or four weeks. Where I had all my starters at right. practice, and they was looking good, flying around to the ball. And I can think about today at practice, uh, Coach Asbury, uh, he asked, who, where he came from? Who made that play? And I told him, he like, oh, all right, never mind. Let's keep going, you know, because we, we, we're back and we're starting to rock and roll right. again. So I'm going to ask you guys, is there that one guy that I guess with all the injuries and things like that that came about, Maybe he played Louisiana U football and you was like, man, this guy was able to blossom and come out of that. And you looking at him like, wow, who, who's that one guy that, that turned the light switch on and has been a major contributor this year? Oh, Joe Williams. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. He, Joe, he was a good player back then. <laughs> well, you know, he, he was all right. You know, he ran what he was doing. He was really starting his senior year. Right. So then he just got the glass of prep and, you know, started hitting the weight. He got big. <laughs> and Joe just blown up out of nowhere. But Joe, he a great player, though. Good deal. So on your team now, is there that one guy that's on your team that plays with you guys that, that you like, man, things have changed a lot. Like, that, that's the one guy who's helped you guys get oh, to where you're King Andrews. Yeah. Okay. This is the first year coming back playing this year. Mm -hmm. Like, he ain't played football since, like, probably 12 years old, middle school, oh, something really? like that. So now he got, like, two, three offers. Oh, really? Wow. So yeah, he was playing strictly basketball, and then he came out, and he contributed, like, immediately to the team. Like, okay. immediately contributed. Okay. But well, that's good, man. I'm glad to see you guys are uh, moving in a great direction, Coach. You sound like y'all got a good, good culture, good energy going. Is there that one thing that one thing you want to share with our viewers and listeners about Southern Lab and the direction that Southern Lab is going in, and what what would be just that one pinnacle thing that you want to dispel? Maybe that 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 people may think that it's like this, but it may not be. I, I'll point in the direction of our leadership, uh, Coach Asbury. Uh, you know, being a head coach myself, a lot of people think, you know, how can two head coaches work together? And I'll be honest, I've learned so much from him. Uh, he he's a great leader, great teacher. Uh, he's not a micromanager. You know, I'm the D, uh, his DC, so he doesn't you know micromanage me. He lets me do my thing, uh, but I also learn a lot from you know how to run a top-notch program. Uh, Southern Lab is a top-notch program. Uh, he runs it like it's a college job, and uh, like I said, he does a great job with his leadership, uh, not just with the kids, but with his coaches as well. Yeah. So I always look back at, at what you just said right there, and, you know, we, all, we, had, we had something we called MVP, Most Valuable Parent. Is there a most valuable parent that you that you want to shout out? Somebody who make sure y'all got the chicken sandwich, <laughs> the clothes wash. Any, you got any parents like that that's that rocking with you? Yeah, he in the building with us tonight, uh, Mr. Tripp. Every every uh, not, Friday, not Coach before the, Tripp. Before the game, he come hug not us. Not the that one was, and uh, only after Coach the game, Tripp in the building. It, it's, uh, he, he, he's there through it all. He, he's you know, he's, one he wants to sure. He, he's a part of the brotherhood too. He's a, good. Well, that's he's a good brother. That's a, Louisiana, a good brother. A Louisiana youth. Coach, a uh, Louisiana U volunteer. Shouts out to Coach Tripp. He's in the building as well. Mama Tripp in the building too. I see him in the building, man. Kudos. I'll tell you what, Coach, we really appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for having us. And thank you guys for what you're doing for our youth, man. Louisiana youth alumni that's over there. You guys probably dressing about uh, 30 of them right. over at your school, you know. Uh, and we give you guys kudos for what you're doing in the community, man, and just keep it going. Appreciate it, man. And good Thank luck you. on your run this season, all right? Thank you. Y'all take care. Keep it locked right here. We'll be back on It's All About the Youth. At Roadrunner Towing, we love our God, our children, our nation, and, yes, our sports. So let's play ball. big when you need to tow, either in East Baton Rouge or West Baton Rouge. Because at Drug Runner Towing, we don't want an arm and a leg. We Did just you want, want your toes. Yeah!
to say great job, congratulations, or way to go? Crown Trophy on Sherwood Forest Boulevard in Baton Rouge has the trophy, plaque, acrylic, or crystal award you're looking for. Whether it's for your team, business, or church, come to Crown Trophy. We guarantee the highest level of customer service, and there's no charge for rush orders or trophy engraving. We're nationally known and locally owned. Visit us online to view our catalog at www.crowntrophy.com. And welcome back to It's All About the Youth. You saw it splash across the screen. MVP. Most Valuable Parent. I have two of them here with me. I had two last show. I have two this show. To my left I have... Ren Jones. I have a son that plays on the fourth grade Cubs team. And I also help out with the cheerleaders Kudos for the games. Kudos to the Cubs. <laughs> Good job, Mom. And I also have... Harrison. And my son plays for the Baton Rouge Raiders. He's on the 9 and 10 year old team. He's a lineman. Okay, good deal. Marquetta Harrison is here too. So tell me something, Mom. Tell me something. How hard is it being a team mom? Well, it's hard because your son is playing and we were talking about this and you want to help and volunteer because they need us to, but right. your boy is on the field. <laughs> Good, but good. it takes an army, and so um, we like to get together and do the things behind the scenes that need to be done. So yeah. for me, that's helping out with the cheerleaders when the main cheerleader coach mom can't be there because right. of work. Right. Um, and I brought this. It's not my notes for the show, but it's printing out the roster so all the parents have the team numbers, right. you know, things like that, having um, Gatorade so really on the sidelines. Take care of business beside the beside the uh, sidelines, but this lady does it way more than, than me. <laughs> so speaking of which, your son has always been. What, what, what did your son play prior to you playing? He played for the Baton Rouge uh, Raiders. We've been with the Raiders since 2016, but 2015 we actually played for the Trojans. Okay, so you were a team mom there too. I help out wherever. <laughs> you do it all. I'm just doing so more work I, with I the heard, Raiders. I heard that you have like a full pill bucket. Tell me about it. What, as a team mom, what do you have to do? <laughs> My car is always packed. I have a book set. <laughs> I have extra notebooks, notepads, pencils. Um, I take care of the registration. I pick up registration fees. Okay. Um, I transport the kids back and forth to practice, to the games. Um, we'll feed them. They know me, they, they know X-Men mom is gonna cook or bring something. I say, yeah, because my child is always hungry. <laughs> they always so are. I'm just one of those all around parents, just to kind of let them know. I know it's football, it's, um, it's teaching you discipline, you know, but then also to share, because my son is an only child. So okay. when he gets out there, he's with his brothers and he's excited. So, so that's a, it's I'm a family. excited too, you, right. You have a family affair going, Yes, right? yes sir, so, it's family. So I have one question for you guys. As a teen mom, how does that, measure up against the coach team mom or being a, a, a head the head coach which one do you think is tougher huh. 
you're going. Oof, that's good. We have to go home with these boys. I don't know. <laughs> so the coaches can leave them to us. So I'm right. like, what do you... <laughs> so do you have a car full that gets like, come you know, on, Bob, John is coming with us. Yeah, yeah, you do. You usually have a car full, yeah. you know, and uh, like my husband will work the chains, you know. Okay. So it is a family affair. Okay. But like she said, it's so true. Um, it teaches them fundamentals, teamwork. Things that are just priceless, you know, yeah, so yes. I think that's why we all want to step up and do our part. Um, my daughter helped uh, kind of coach the cheerleaders. She's a high school cheerleader, so Good she deal. on Saturday went to help so them learn she gets cheers. Her community service yeah, in as well. you know, so we all pull our weight awesome. because it's worth it. Right. Right. <laughs> and like you said, you get to do a family. It's a family yes, outing. It is. And with teenagers, if your daughter's a high, I know she yeah. doesn't really make time for mom anymore. Ew. You're not cool anymore. You know, so. One of those days, you know, X Man is gonna grow up and he's gonna yeah. be like, "Hey, mom, yeah. uh, leave the cookies." He's just, already uh, five feet tall right now, 146 <laughs> pounds. Oh my 18. god! Oh yeah. my god! Just get ready, right? Yes. Talk get about good. food, right? <laughs> so the grocery bill is always high because you got a house full. Right? That's it. So we've solidified that. We've also, I heard you say it. You said team mom is harder than it being the head. No, no, coach. coaches, I heard, please. I did not say that. <laughs> He is mistaken. No, no. I, re no. I retract that. <laughs> I retract that statement. Right. You, 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 are you guys on the same side or are you different? Do you beg to differ or are you same side? It's all different roles, huh? Yeah, different roles, but okay, yeah. we So you guys, you guys are, your teams are playing each other Saturday. On Saturday, yes. we just learned this. Yeah. We're what a coincidence. Right. I know. What? So, so I can't even wait. Are, do we have a, a behind the scenes TV show, a blurper, right? We can get... Uh, inside scoop right now. Are y'all ready? Oh, an okay. inside scoop. Do you have one? Are you, is, did you get your kids ready? You have some special snacks for the game. Some special plays that yeah. we're gonna like. Do you know the special plays? No, that's one thing, team moms. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I just want to see if coach. Yeah. Do you know some plays? I just no. tell them to get out there and have fun. Just yeah. Do your best that's and it. have well, that's, fun. That's what it's about. <laughs> and I want to tell you guys. You know, I really appreciate the extra mile that you guys go to make sure. The kids in Louisiana youth have the ultimate experience. Right. Because without you guys, the coaches would not be able to just focus on coaching. Yeah. Or they would have to do paperwork and registration all the time, which I know they don't want to do that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, we want to just make sure that we also tell you guys thank you. Thank you. For oh, what you do for no our youth and the volunteer of time that you do. Thank you. Well, thank you for promoting it in this way. Yeah. We thank definitely you. appreciate it, okay? Well, kudos to so, the moms, the most valuable yeah. moms from the club. And to Saturday. And what? The race. <laughs> and to Saturday. See you Saturday. <laughs> Go find them. They're going to have all the treat bags. Treat bags on them. Treat bags on them. <laughs> Again, we Keep a lot right here. We'll be back on It's All About the Youth because it's all about the moms, the most valuable parents. Thank, huh? thank you. Good deal. <laughs> thank you all so much. At Roadrunner Towing, we love our God, our children, our nation, and yes, our sports. So, let's play ball. Score big when you need to tow, either in East Baton Rouge or West Baton Rouge. Because at Roadrunner Towing, we don't want an arm and a leg, we just want your toes. to say great job, congratulations, or way to go? Crown Trophy on Sherwood Forest Boulevard in Baton Rouge has the trophy, plaque, acrylic, or crystal award you're looking for. Whether it's for your team, business, or church, come to Crown Trophy. We guarantee the highest level of customer service, and there's no charge for rush orders or trophy engraving. We're nationally known and locally owned. Visit us online to view our catalog at www.crowntrophy.com.
<laughs> and welcome back. And welcome back. Welcome back. It's all about the youth. I am Aaron. That's Leroy. I'm Aaron. That's Leroy. That's Le yeah, you hear? I don't know if you hear or not. I don't hear you. But anyway, I just want, look, I want to say this while we're thinking out loud. While we're thinking out loud. Shouts out to Leroy. You see our. Hey. Where are we? We're, we're back. Are we back? Yeah, we're, no, back. we're, we're back. Technical uh, difficulties. So saw, hey, man, it's homecoming for you <laughs> over at the lab. You, you see, I got my green yeah, on. Lab you, school. You lab representing. That's what I'm talking about. Good job, man. We started that AL stuff. LSU yeah. took it from us. They took it from The lab. The lab. You know, we had it across the chest. Yeah, I saw it. On they the tried to ban it. Yeah, they tried to ban it from us. Yeah. But we still the lab. I hear you, baby. The athletic academy. The, athletic, <laughs> the, athletic. the first athletic academy. Then everybody will start biting them old. Madison Prep came along. I'm just saying. Well, the best form of flattery is what? Imitation. I, I guess that's what it is, imitation. I mean, hey. That's in the other communities. In our community, they think they did it. You did it. You did something. <laughs> ah, I did it first. Man, hey, matchups and robberies. Tell me Dude, about it. We got some good games coming up uh, this week. This, But this week is kind of a slow week, man, because I'm, I'm trying to see – it's not going to be any big changes in the brackets. Okay. I mean, in the, in, the, in the power rankings, we had small small changes last week. Man, we had uh, we had a big upset with the Seahawks beating in the uh, nine and ten year age group. The Seahawks beating the Rams. The best oh, coach, wow. the best coach the in best the country. Coach in the country lost. Got, got beat. So man, I am not trying to dump on him, but the Seahawks beat. Him. I mean, it was a, a they manhandled. I wonder how we probably need to call him up and see how he's handling. Yeah, that. I've been checking the uh, Mississippi River Bridge, the old and the new. He hadn't been on there. He so, hadn't been on there. So he ain't jumping. Hey, I mean, he's too, too smooth. For yeah, he's too smooth. Yeah. And then the uh, the Raiders ended up beating. Uh, was it the Bengals? It was a tight game. It was. It okay. was a, I'm yeah, it was the Bengals. Yeah, the Bengals. The they, Bengals. they beat them a uh, seven nothing. As a matter of fact, the Raiders have been doing a seven nothing game. Now I don't know if that's good defense or good offense. Sound like it's good defense. Sound you, like yeah. You don't. We don't give up any points. That's that's good defense. Exactly. Yeah. They put. They giving some eggs to a lot of people, man. That's, that's All that game's been pretty close. So on on those age groups, and of course the eleven and twelves has been real steady, yeah. except for the Raiders. Again, the, the Raiders eleven and twelve year old team uh, beat the Rams this past weekend. Yeah, so they're slowly climbing their way up the chart. So it so, may be an interesting uh, rate of preview uh, uh, at the uh, end uh, of the season. You know, we getting close to playoff time. Yeah, man. two weeks left. Two weeks left. Well, in the three weeks. Season. This week yeah. coming, and then two weeks after yeah. that. So it's oh so, wow, it's counting down, counting down <laughs> to playoff football. And I always say. When Louisiana U hits playoff football, it's a different type of football. It's, it's a new season. No first quarter running <laughs> yeah, clock. It's a no new mercy season. rules. All yeah. it turns into real gridiron battles. Because and then there's no mercy rule, uh, yeah. a gentleman rule as gentleman we call it. Rule, we yeah. don't have that gentleman rule, so you can get seventy wrong on you. <laughs> 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 you might see it. You might see that the score get lopsided. Yeah. Real so bad. for those of y'all that's following our stats on Game Center. GameCenter.LouisianaYouthFootball.com If you're, you're following the stats and stuff So if you see some 70 to nothing games And, and we're going to playoffs It is playoff football So, right. so we're running it through playoff football So it's a different different animal there All right. So I always look at this too And I, I we had some great guests on today man. Do you remember just thinking back 
of, of, of watching those yeah. kids. Dude, I'm telling you, it's amazing to see those kids turn because, you know, you asked them a, a real good question. Who was the kid that really changed around and turned the light switch around? Mm-hmm. Those kids that were on here today, the light switch was on early. We saw that right. early because we could have predicted those kids have been there because we saw them. Every, yeah. All four of them were athletes when they were little kids, when they were five and six years old right. playing, playing D-League. The maturation of Braylon Morgan, yeah. the, the match, you know, Joe, like we, I mean, over the years, just looking at these kids, you know, Jabbar Triplett, you know, just looking at all, you know, Josh Parker, a.k.a. Joystick, Joystick to us, yeah. you know, just looking at how they groomed, you know, we, they were they were groomed to be what they are. Yeah. They were like this when they were young. They were little kids. So it's yeah. no secret. Exactly. To us, you know? So, so for, for Arizona or for mm. whoever's about to get Josh Braylon and, and Mike, we knew that. Yeah. So we, it's not that we're predicting. It's not that you know. We, you hear a lot of people say, "Well, you can't tell if a kid's going to go on to be on a, a I higher level." I beg You can come to Louisiana U football, and I promise you, nine out of ten times you can't predict it. Now we have some who don't hit that growth spurt. Clodrick Hilaire has and, been Clodrick <laughs> Hilaire since he was yep. five, six years old. Yep. Tyrion Davis grew into the role yeah. of being a phenomenal back. But as far as him being a stud, he was he's a stud. been a stud since he was a little <laughs> yep. kid. You know, Demon Clark. Demon Clark been a stud since he was a little kid. Derek Stingley been, been a stud. stud. You know, I, I want to mention in the Florida game, we had three touchdowns and interception, all from Louisiana youth football. Why? Because it's, it's all, all about, about the youth, baby. Keep That's, it locked. <laughs> we here. We yep. can't help it. LYSNTV.com, LYSNRadio.com. Tell the truth. <laughs> Same to you. It's only entertainment. Not entertained. Are you not?